Let's go back to childhood together, when we used to lap up those cowboy movies. A wealthy lady on a walk down a valley, sunning her alabaster complexion, enraptured by endless and wonderful natural scenes. But not everything is as idyllic as it seems, and out of nowhere comes a grubby greasy bandito, hidden behind the rocks he lurks, waiting for his prey. As soon as he sees his victim, he draws his handguns and leaves his den. He demands all her valuables on pain of death. Well, what is a lady to do? She would rather lose her money than her life. The lady gives up her purse and sobbing loudly makes her escape down the picture's quilly. The bandito gets his loot and seems satisfied. But we are out in the wild west, so how can the bandito be sure it's real gold and not just some worthless substitute? Testing its hardness with its rotten teeth may not be the ideal solution. Dear bandito, Give us some of your loot, and we will look at it using our reactor. And what has a reactor to do with exploring the properties of materials? The answer is quite simple. Neutron activation analysis. This method allows us to examine materials in both qualitative and quantitative terms. And to say it in plain language, we can find out what there is and how much of it there is. Activation analysis has several advantages. The first of these is being able to explore virtually any material we find around us, from asteroid fragments to human brain tissue. Another great feature is that the method is non-destructive. The material being analyzed is left undamaged and can be reused. For the experiment to go well, we do of course need qualified experts and specialized equipment. The cornerstone of the method is irradiating the samples and reference materials in a nuclear reactor, into which the samples are introduced using a custom-made high-tech grip. The irradiated samples are then moved to a special lab. The activated materials emit gamma rays, which we detect in an HPG detector chamber. Each isotope emits a certain set of gamma radiation wavelengths, called a spectrum. By comparing the spectra of the sample with a standard reference piece, we are able to determine the qualitative characteristics of the material. It asked what our sample consists of. To determine the quantitative characteristics, it asked how much there is. We need only compare measured sample values with reference pieces of known mass and by means of a simple trinomial and a couple of corrective factors, we can very precisely give the mass of the respective substances. And that is all. The samples, together with the results of the analysis, can be returned to the proud owner with our best wishes for the days ahead.